All right, it is 719. Time to call this meeting special meeting to order. The purpose of this meeting is to interview candidates for the Oakland County, the Oakland County seat, and to vote in public for to fill that seat. Uh, we will go into executive session to discuss personnel after we do the interviews. Okay. Uh, we will not vote in executive session, we will vote in open session. All right. After and clarification, we'll vote after our executive yes, session. Yes, we will. Perfect. Absolutely. So um if the candidates would please introduce yourself to the crowd. Yeah. Would you like to have a roll call? Oh, yes, I would want the roll call. Thank okay. you. I'm sorry, I'm skipping myself. Okay. Get excited. Mr. Clement. Here. Mr. Taylor. Here. Ms. Jones. Here. Mr. Duffy. Here. Mr. Sherman. Here. The booth. Here. Uh, motion to excuse Susan from the special meeting. So moved. Second. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Ms. Jones. Yes. Mr. Duffy. Yes. Mr. Sherman. Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. All right. Thank you, Susan. Okay. All right. Uh, Chief Tim, if you'd like to, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Chief Tiffany Inski. I recently got married, so uh, my name changed. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I've been in law enforcement for 22 years. Um, I've been down here in Nelsonville. Nelsonville. It'll be a two years in June. Um, I started off four years on the street, 12 years in academia at Central State University, seven years at um, Aachen College. Nice. Thank I you. have two kids, a dog, and a <laughs> grandson. <laughs> and, and you, of course, live inside city limits. Correct. correct. I All live right. in Nelsonville. Yeah. Just making sure. Yes, oh, and, sir. And you are a registered voter and have been a registered voter for more than a year. Yes, ma'am. All right. Good deal. Sorry. Your new name again? Inski. I N S K E E P. Inski. Inski. Like he Inski. Just call me Inski. Just call me Tim's. I answer. We can't throw too many new concepts. Yeah, yeah. We got to take care of Dan. He gets a little confused. Okay. Ma'am. I am Shayla Taylor. I'm 22 years old. We moved here about three years ago. I am a licensed cosmetologist. I have a CST certificate, so I work in hospitals. Um, we have three dogs and a cat, and that's about us. <laughs> and you live inside the city limits yes. of Nelsonville for the last year? Yeah, we've been and, here three years. And yep. the and you're a registered voter? Yes, sir. In the last year. Okay. All right, sir. Yeah, my name is Nick Smith. I've lived in Southeast Ohio most of my life. I've been in Nelsonville for four years. Um, currently, I work as a software developer, um, but before that, I worked in the nonprofit space uh, at GoodWorks there in Athens for about seven years and a, another place out in California before that. Um, I have a wife and a child, an 18-month-old son, and uh, I am a resident of Nelsonville, and okay. I am a registered voter. Okay. Just got to make sure. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to ask you all questions. And you can all answer them individually. Um, I always start off with the same question. Um, being on city council, you will receive a lot of criticisms. A lot of criticism. Um, it is not a. Sometimes it can be a thank, a very thankless job. Um, why would you want to be on council? Why do you want to be on council, Chief Timms? Well, I get criticized all the time, so I'm kind of <laughs> used to that. Um, but what I will say is to make a difference. Um, most of the community that I see, um, especially being on the college campus, uh, the community represents a body that looks like me, at least 2% of the community. So I think to have some diversity on the, um, the, on the council seat would be um, very uh, an asset to Nelsonville, period. Great. Thank you. Um, honestly, I just want to help bring the community together. So kind of teach the kids to like look up to like the firemen and police as well. And just kind of like help integrate like police and the fire department into our community and mm -hmm. help get awareness that like we can trust each other and clean things up. Okay. Mr. Smith. Yeah. So when I was working in at Good Works, a big part of my job was speaking to people uh, not from this area about this area. And in the process of doing that, I learned a lot, even being from here about the various challenges and difficulties faced by this region. And I developed a deep appreciation for who we are and our culture and the things that are happening here, as well as an awareness of areas that can improve. And so um, I'm just here to learn about what the next steps for that part of me and that passion that I have uh, might look like. Okay. Um, 
Mr. Clement, do you have any questions for our candidates? Yeah, I have a question uh, for all three. What do you see as Nelsonville's strongest quality? And what do you see as Nelsonville's weakest? And whoever wants to answer first, I guess. Yeah, I can go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that this answer applies to Nelsonville, but I also would answer it for all of Southeast Ohio. And I think the strongest quality is its people. Uh, the people who live here and the gifts they have and the passions and the history and knowledge they have about what has happened in this region, about the pains and about the triumphs. And so uh, that's what I'm excited about this opportunity to like connect with people and be a person, not just some institution or some far off government, but a, a representative of uh, the people that we serve here in the, in the town. I can go next. I think one of the strong qualities I've seen in Nelsonville is when the, um, excuse my lack of a better word, when the stuff hit the fan, everybody bands together and sticks together as a whole. It's a togetherness. Um, there's no separation at the time. You won't see it. You won't see it. Uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, weaknesses, I would say, uh, with the community is um, not having, uh, being educated on culture, being educated on diversity is very important. And I think that I could bring that and maybe have some classes for the community on culture and diversity, equity and inclusion, which is important throughout this country, not just, um, not just, uh, you know, Athens, but in Nelsonville where I live. Um, honestly, I think probably the best thing about Nelsonville is it's a very small um, community, which makes it very easy to get people close knit. Um, one of the biggest things that I've seen since I live here is it's kind of depending on where you live, how close you are in that close knit community. So just like what road you on, it's like not safe to go there after dark. <laughs> That's the biggest disadvantage. But I think that it would be um, almost one of the best challenges to try and get those places not as dangerous and be able to actually be a close knit community because we're small. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Taylor. Go ahead and skip questions. me if you don't mind, because uh, he, he took, took yours. Yes, he took yours. You got to <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he took the one. He and took I the softball. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's giving, he's okay. Are you guys? Are you guys ready? Because the hammer's coming. Miss Jones. Oh, no. Um, oh. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> she's she's always so. Good. You know, being on council, I think um, a lot of times it's mundane. You know, we come to meetings and approve ordinances about you know allocating funds and all of that. Um, what, I guess, is like the one thing that you most would want to accomplish as a city council person? Help me, I can go first. Um, me just cleaning up the city, um, bringing new, fresh, innovative ideas to the city. Um, when you bring fresh ideas, I'm from the city, um, big, big city. So, you know, sometimes when you come from a big city, um, you see different things that you would in a smaller city, and you can implement them in the smaller versions, uh, depending on what your funds, what allotments of funds you have available. Um, so that is one of the things that I can bring, um, new innovative things and ideas to the community. Um, honestly, I think the biggest thing would be to just see where we could like make a difference for other people. So um, in other words, like, uh, where I grew up, we did like cookouts with the firemen and we brought the kids around and we did like donations for it to help clean up the streets and everything. And I think that's something that I would really like to see up here is just like a lot more community service, basically get the whole city involved. I would love to see the establishment of some kind of small business incubator. Um, you know, there's a lot of vacant uh, commercial spaces uptown and I, I just envision some kind of partnership mm -hmm. where we you know, get a good deal and then reach out to people here in Nelsonville and say, hey, like, do you have ideas? Like, let's give you a space to kind of work that out and, and trial it without having to make that, you know, real estate investment that is, is kind of too high a barrier of entry to people. Um, so I, I would love to, if, if I were on it and saw something like that coming around, I'd be really proud of that. Okay. Mr. Sherman. So council is very sometimes most popular the right decisions not always popular can you make the tough decision if need be even if it's against family members 
and employers. friends and employers. I feel like I'm taking a lie detector test. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Most it, definitely. It's it's hard. That's it, something that I do on my job at all every day. So yes, most definitely. I have no problem without a doubt doing the right thing for the right reason. I most definitely will. Thank you. I'm just saying with that, um, if it comes down to it, I think uh, if there's a clear decision of yes or no, I would have to agree with it. So I, I do it daily at my job. You know, I help work on people while they're under anesthesia. So if I see something wrong, I have to speak up. There is no hesitation. So yes, definitely. Yeah, for two years, I worked as the house manager for the Timothy House. It's the only shelter for people experiencing homelessness in Southeast Ohio. And uh, in that role, um, if people broke the rules or were violent or created a dangerous situation, I had to evict them. And uh, sometimes they had children. Sometimes there were people I liked who I believed in. And I wanted, you know, I was rooting for all of these people. But uh, sometimes I still had to evict them and, and send them on their way. And that was hard. But. I can do it and I can do that in this space as well. All right, thank you. Mr. Booth, any questions? Well, absolutely. Thank you very much for asking. So, yeah. so uh, as council people, um, you know, we, we set you know, laws, ordinances, we work in concert with the city manager and by extension, the departments. Um, and a lot of things that we do, you know, one of the things I've learned as being part of city council is things don't happen immediately. You know, I'm used to snapping my fingers and say, okay, we're going to do this policy, we're going to do it this way, we're going to follow that process. That being said, um, how do you envision Nelsonville in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Uh, what, if you had a magic eight ball and you could look at Nelsonville in that time and you had some kind of influence on how it went, how do you envision that? Well, first of all, um, I, I'm sorry, you all, but I got to go first. On this. <laughs> I, I would envision Nelsonville as a thriving city, a close knit city, um, making sure cleaning up the homeless population. Most definitely, that's just something that I see and I help deal with on a, a everyday basis. As um, far as um, the city code of the housing, the housing around Miss um, Barber has at the time has done an excellent done an excellent job with that. As um, far as the streets, um, the sewer lines, um, invest in that, invest in the water lines, um, just make sure Nelsonville is thriving at its highest capacity and, um, uh, and it's on its way now. You just have to get the right people in the right seat to make the right decisions. I agree with everything she said. Um, the only thing that really that I would envision also from being younger, eventually we're going to have kids. Um, and for me, I would like to be able to let my kid outside and not have to worry about who's coming, what's on the ground. Um, we're always picking up trash around our area. We found needles in our backyard. Um, that's something that I would like to not have to worry about in the next five to 10 years. So just a very, um, well, my neighbor type city would be my goal. I hope you don't have to worry about that in the next day. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's always yeah, yeah. the goal. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think Nelsonville is really well situated to be a bedroom community. Um, I think if we can attract remote workers, if we can improve the quality of our housing stock, if we can, you know, clean up our streets and get some, you know, attractive kind of amenities in the square. Um, I think that's the, I mean, obviously, if I could wave a magic wand, I would like, you know, put a whole bunch of solar panel factories in here that are going to be here forever. But in terms of like realistic, like 10 years from now, I think that is the path that I see as being a, a really great one. And I also, you know, would really hope that somewhere in that vision is a, an increase in civic engagement and kind of civic infrastructure. You know, I think I heard the last time that a position like this opened up, there was like maybe zero or one applicants. And so I'm, I mean, I'm already a little bit encouraged that was there more than that? Oh, good. Well, then I, I was encouraged, I guess, to see that there was three applicants for this position. And I hope that there will be more on the next one and the next one and that we would continue to see more people in the, in town engage with what's going on. We hope that we don't have to keep filling vacancies. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so that would be yeah. great too. Yeah. The one thing, Stay the one thing that not this council can, can really agree on is we try and keep business and personal separate. And we try to make that a goal. You know, just because your opinion, Corey's opinion doesn't match mine, doesn't mean that either one of us are wrong. Um, it's hard, it's easy to get drawn into that. I will tell you that it's easy to have outside people 
chattering in your ear, talking. And, and then that becomes your obsession and your goal is to try and get that. Well, that's not always the right thing. And it's hard. It is hard. Okay. Any more questions? Mr. 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 Taylor, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I think it is. First of all, okay. I, I am encouraged also that there are three candidates for uh, yeah. one vacancy, which is terrific, I think. And and uh, I would, I, I'm very pleased with what I hear so far. I don't want anybody to be discouraged. Um, obviously, we only have one seat that we can fill. Um, so I would absolutely encourage you to continue on and, and you know, try to get engaged and maybe run for the next election if you're not appointed this evening. Um, I agree with the sentiments of getting more people involved. We are starting to, uh, that is happening. Um, uh, you know, we, we finally have, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we just built the last seat on the rec board, which is the first time in almost uh, eight, nine years, 10 years that yeah. we've had a full rec yeah. board, which is only five individuals, by the way, in the community. Yeah. <clears throat> so um doesn't seem like a lot, right? But uh, it is hard to get people engaged. Um, I would also tell you that uh, social media is uh, challenging. Uh, they're seeing, you know, perception is not always reality. Uh, you have a lot of people that will jump to conclusions, will say certain things, uh, will ask questions, but will never go to the source and ask, you know, what's really happening. Um, they just want to have everybody just, you know, start speculating on that. Um, and so, and that, that tends to be, you know, discouraging when you're trying to move things forward. I'm a, I'm an optimist, eternal. I've always have been, always will be, always look at the bright side of things. And I've, since I've been here in 95, there's been great strides in this town, uh, in this community. So there is always positive things happening here. It's whether or not we choose to focus on those or the negative. So that being said, and we do have good things going on, and you obviously see that, how can we get people more engaged and involved in the community? Because we've asked repeatedly during open sessions and, and uh, uh, you know, for people to get involved. And I think that part of the reason why we are filling the rec board is that, you know, they see, you know, there are some people that see the good things, but I'm open to ideas and I'd like to see if you guys have anything that you might have that we haven't thought. How can we get people involved? That was a speech and a question. Yes, yes. <laughs> but you've multitasked on that. <laughs> Just as I'll say. <laughs> well, I would think having more um, activities to do with the community, um, community engagement. Um, if this do having something specifically for the, the children, you know, um, then that's something that needs to be done, not just opening the pool for the summer, having something engaging the children. Um, it could be an educational piece, um, even with the community um, educational piece. I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm an education guru, so sure. um, that's just, I'm, I'm in school, so that I, I continue to get educated all the time. But could, but something activities for the community, um, even with the police, Nelsonville police, if it's um, uh, taking your streets back or having activity uh, with the, the with the uh, the young people, because the young people are our future. They're the ones who's going to be making decisions when it comes to our social security and stuff. So we definitely need to educate them. We definitely need to be involved with them. Um, I know um, National Night Out, the police departments have. Um, that's something because, you know, right now the trust with police is kind of so you want to try to engage that bridge that gap. So it's having police activities so they can see the police, so they can meet the police, so they can engage the police. And um, Attila the dog is a very beneficial um, police officer. So she, uh, he would be used 100 percent, which he is. Um, but police resources is absolutely uh, critical. Uh, to the community to bridge the gap with the with the police and the community to bring them together, everybody together. So I'm really on events to educate, events mm -hmm. to give knowledge to people. Mm -hmm. Ms. Taylor, no, 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 no relation, no. by the way. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I agree with everything she said. Um, I would go as far as to uh, Easter's coming up. So a big thing that we did to keep um, close knit where I grew up was we did an Easter egg hunt that was thrown on by fire department and police station. 
and they were there. So you participated while you talked to the people of your city who protects it and takes care of you. Um, I always go as far as taking advantage of the pool, having an adult night, um, night swim for the teenagers. You can do movie night for the kids. There's a lot of different ways um, to get them active that way. Um, do lots of donations to help clean up the city. So then they're putting their money back into where it goes and they can see that. Um, so a couple things come to mind. One is I think we could leverage our website a little bit better. Um, I think it's strictly very functional in the sense that it like conveys information, but it doesn't necessarily tell the story of like what is the city doing to improve itself? Like what are the, what's the good things that are happening and where, what is the trajectory? Um, I don't know if we have a five-year plan or some, some kind of laid out roadmap, but making that really visible and showing where we're on it. And are we hitting those goals? Do we need adjustment? So I think there's a bit of a storytelling aspect that's kind of lost in that because it's very informational, um, which is good. <coughs> it's transparent, but it doesn't you know, get people excited to like read the board minutes or whatever. Um, the other thing I could imagine is maybe like, a, and this would be more time on this body, but uh, like a monthly meet your council person just out on the square and, you know, just promote it a little bit and, you know, a different person sitting out there with, you know, whatever, some coffee and just and kind of an open invitation to the public to go and chat and just hear and listen to what, what's going on and find out what we're doing here in this space. Um, I think that could be powerful as well. Right. I've got additional questions. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, so <laughs> it's only beginning. So uh, to to play on something that Mr. Smith said earlier about um, becoming a veteran community uh, potentially, and, and it's I think it's a quite viable uh, option. What what kind of ideas um, would you all have for drawing? Uh, people to want to live in Nelsonville, want to make Nelsonville their hometown? Well, I think, you know, the most important thing is to kind of build strength on strength. So we have music festivals, we have the Parade of the Hills, we have this beautiful square, we have, you know, proximity to multiple colleges. And so emphasizing those things, finding places where we can promote ourselves as being geographically situated. Oh, and uh, that, not to mention, uh, the new bike trails that they're putting in. And so there's a lot of things that are a, like a very nice distance. And so we have this appeal and then we also have lower housing costs. And so I think messaging is really important and how we are presenting, like there's a lot of really good reasons to get in on the ground floor in Nelsonville. Um, beyond that, I think, uh, I think a really, you know, solid litter, like addressing litter could, could go a long way. I mean, you know, it's gonna be very expensive, I think, to like address, you know, blight and housing. I think we can get there, but just like, you know, at least in public spaces, um, mo you know, mobilizing some citizens to have a, you know, monthly or quarterly town cleanup. And maybe, maybe we could target it towards high schoolers and like, you know, get some gift cards or something that we hand out afterwards, like something that can get them involved. Um, but I think, yeah, just cleaning up and then kind of building on our strengths and really promoting ourselves and, and you know, presenting ourselves as like, we're situated around a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and this is a great place to live. I can concur with what he's saying, because like I said, I'm a city girl and coming down here to Southeast Ohio was a different experience for me. Um, some some insects and animals I haven't never seen before until I came down to this <laughs> this area. So I'll be very honest with you. Um, but I will say is this city um, to me um, some of the uh, innovative, unique things that I've seen, um, like passing the ATV um, riding on the certain streets. I really like that um, because it's different. Um, Nelsonville is different in a whole. They you, you kind of um, you try to appease your community. So one thing you could do is just continue to do that, come up with innovative, different things. But I will say he, he touched on the litter and um, I had an idea and I should have said that the last time the one of the other questions were asked um, about the litter. You know, we have you all have um, mayor's court. Um, mayor's court goes on when you have people that's got fined and need to do community service. That could be one of their community services is to go out and pick the litter up in the community it is. in, in yeah. certain areas. It is. I did 90 hours of community service last 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think they've been picking up literally. They've been they've, they've been, been cutting up work. They've been doing brushwork. Water meters and brushwork. They've been cleaning the brushwork. Oh, okay. Also. But yeah, okay, but and the I'm snow is melted. We're holding back the litter. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right that's right. something. Um, that's you know, a big thing. You know, we're going to repeat we're going to remain well, maybe 90 hours next time. What? Um, um, okay. <laughs> so that is just some ideas. You just got to keep the ideas going because the community, what you should do is ask the community, have like a town hall meeting in, a, in an auditorium or something and, and have and talk about issues. Talk about when you, you have a complaint from a community member, then you have a town hall meeting and, and have the community come out and talk about these issues, have up on a panel and have these issues, different things um, that they're concerned about. Bring people in to speak to them. Um, just appeasing a the community because the people are the ones who have to live here. So uh, a great idea. I love the ATV uh, aspect, really, I do. So that's just one of them. I agree with her. Um, community support is definitely a big thing. Um, and hearing their voices is an even bigger thing. Um, but once again, I go back to keeping our city clean. Um, if we have houses that look nicer and there's not trash everywhere, um, that helps draw people in because it looks like a nice place to go. You want to bring your kids here. You're happy to let them play at the park. And I feel like that's the biggest thing we're kind of missing on targeting right now is just kind of like family basis. So the first thing you see when you come into town is empty buildings. That's not really the best <laughs> opening, they're kind of run down and not really cleaned up on. So I think um, finding ways to actually get your community to support those things on a daily basis is probably one of the biggest goals that I have. Okay, great. And uh, I'm going to pick on Ms. Taylor now. So you mentioned empty buildings. Uh, I think Mr. Smith mentioned it mm -hmm. earlier as well. Um, we do have quite a few empty buildings. Um, what's... Um... Nick didn't get to answer that last question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did. I thought I did. I thought you 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 I mean, I work remotely and I would love it if I could drive down to the square and pay a hundred bucks a month or whatever and just like have this open office space with other folks and, and have somebody to talk to besides my cat. Um, I think that would be great. And I think it could even be, you know, sustainable as a, you know, minor source of revenue for the city. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of another amenity that might be appealing to folks to, who are thinking about moving here. Great. Um, so, yeah, my next question was, you know, how do we fill those empty spaces? Uh, and what type of, or sorts of businesses uh, should we look to attract um, with what you know all the assets that we currently have and what we've been building towards? Um, there's there's uh, been some talk with the city manager about branding Nelsonville as the star of the Hocking Hills because of our star brick. Um, so how do we how do we brand that? How do we utilize maybe our website? But what businesses do we bring? Uh, what types of businesses and how do we do that? Well, so how you can bring some businesses is possibly as far as um, the fee, lower the fee for a couple months. I mean, we just are coming out of a pandemic. Um, time businesses, small businesses are struggling. Um, so what you can do to help them is possibly um, maybe lower, the, depending on the building, the taxes. I mean, uh, what uh, some type of incentive. I'm just throwing different uh, things out, but some type of incentive to attract them to to fill a vacancy. Um, you need to that that can be put out there, but also some of the things that um, I look around at the buildings. I see a lot of food, um, well, few few food restaurants. Um, um, I see the flower shop was a good one, a good a good space, um, but this is a time where you ask the community what do they want, what would they like to see. And me being a part of the community, I would like to see um, uh, another re another restaurant go up. You know, um, when you're in town and on a Friday night, it's Mexican food, or McDonald's, or Burger King. Rhapsody. You know, um, Rhapsody. I mean, it's 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 just the same things over over, and over. over you know. And maybe we can have something because I know I like Wendy's. Um, we have to drive to Logan. 
you know, uh, send it to get Wendy's here or get another restaurant, something of uh, Chipotle's here. You know, Chipotle's takes up a little space, maybe in the square or something like that. That's something you have to approach these companies to bring them here to establish business. That's how you make money. That's how the city makes money. So I'm just bringing a little, couple more food restaurants. You can even bring a, a vendor, uh, a boutique. Um, I know it's a lot of ladies in the town. Um, and I know the ladies like clothes. I know they like shoes. It's, um, you know, men. Men do like certain things too. Game shops. I mean, it's, it's a few things that you can bring to the square to utilize the space. And in the same time, help to help the business and help the city too. I, I daydream about opening a bookstore on the square all the time. So personally, I would love that. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely agree. Restaurants would be great. Uh, you know, I mean, I in my ideal world, you know, a lot of these businesses would be owned and operated by people from Nelsonville. You know, I think especially if we become a bedroom community, we run the risk of gentrification, you know, mostly along the lines of class. But, you know, I, I think it would be a shame if we set up a a solution that ends up pushing out half of the folks who live here. Um, and so I see, you know, investing early in um, locally owned businesses as a way to kind of counteract that proactively. Um, and so part of the answer is, is like, well, what are the gifts of, of people here? Like, what are they making? You know, what art or stuff or food do they make that, you know, it's like, hey, you know what, you could sell this and people will buy it and they just need a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of resources to get that going. Um, but yeah, to strictly answer your question, restaurants, uh, you know, bookstores or other, you know, goods that people like to buy when they're just, you know, really, I think about like when people are leaving a show at, at Opera House, I remember before I even lived in Nelsonville, I was like, this is a neat little spot. Like, I'd like to walk around. And I was left wanting. I was like, I wish there was, I could go into this building and shop around, but there's nothing here. So I think uh, that's a, a lens that I apply to it is like, what do people want right after they're done seeing a show at the Opera House? And I think they want to eat and they want to shop. I can agree with that. However, um, with it being a very small area, I would want to see locally owned business instead of chains. Um, I feel like chains don't leave a lot of room for the community to thrive off of it. Um, and I would want to uh, have businesses where the community gets involved. So you could uh, use those spaces to teach people how to do certain things, um, grow your own food. You can support that that way, um, teach uh, kids how to sew, knit, anything to keep them involved and keep the money coming back into the city. On top of that, as an incentive, I would um, offer community help to get the space around cleaned up by the community instead of leaving it all on the new business owner. Right. Um, so I have one. So we meet twice a month as council, second and fourth um, Mondays, and then we have committee meetings. If you know you're on a committee, um, <laughs> come to those. Um, I guess do you all feel like you have the time commitment to make all these, you know, meetings and and be part of it? Most of them are after seven, right? Uh, council starts at seven. Committee meetings, we varies. You know, generally work you, you work with people and ask them their schedule and. But usually evenings. evenings. Yeah. 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 Well, a little guy's bedtime's at seven, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm good to go. Yeah, seven. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't like have like a committee meeting at noon. Sure. Yeah. You know, like, yes. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be able to make that. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. I mean, like, yeah, we all, you know, the most part work, so that's not. And this is. Basically, a volunteer position. Yeah. I mean, there, there is a very, very small, uh, you know, salary. You're not doing it for the money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah it's about a half a text. Yeah, exactly. Right now, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, depending on what you drive. Yeah. I'll be walking to meetings from now on. Mm -hmm. I'll pick you. Yeah, work. I'll wait. Do you want to drive by? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. I to Elizabeth's point too about council. So we have the meetings we try to make pretty brief and, and efficient. The committee meetings is really where the work's done. Um, this evening, you know, the evenings, this evening's meetings that we had tonight were pretty quick. That we, you know, we just had a few pieces of legislation that needed to be, you know, discussed and made sure that we were okay with passing through to final council. But 
you know, ultimately when we're talking about um, changes to, you know, uh, you know, either ordinances or, you know, creating resolutions for the city, you know, trying to do projects, et cetera, that discussion takes place and can be multiple uh, committee meetings before we even bring something to uh, full council. And, um, you know, obviously as of late, you know, utility uh, has probably been one of the, you know, bigger community, you know, committee meetings because of the wastewater plant. Um, and, and everything runs, should run through committee first before it's brought to council. Um, you know, it shouldn't be, we shouldn't show up on council all day and, and have an ordinance that we haven't discussed or that no one is uh, at least you know, aware of. Um, and actually you're coming in at a good time too, because this is probably the most uh, transparent, you know, the city's been ever. Um, I, I've been involved with city council now for, um, this is my 10th year, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, there's, we know everything that's going on now. We have a city manager that lets us know everything that's, in, that's going on day to day. Um, you can call throughout the week and he'll give you an update on what's happening that day. Um, you know, it's, and our auditors been the same way. We haven't had that before. So it's a really, it's a great thing. I'm, I'm grateful to be part of that because um, we know more than the average person on the street, but it's it's a it's a tough position though. You get you do get scrutinized and criticized a lot, but it's I think it's a great thing, and I'm glad that you guys are here, and I appreciate you um, wanting to be part of it. And it's a lot of work for a hundred dollars a month, eighty six dollars after taxes. Yeah, I only get eighty five. Another question. No, no, no. Okay, I thought you were like. No, no, no. No, we were just admiring his speech. Again. I think he's, Mr. Been box. Right? he's been on that soapbox the last couple of yeah, times. Yeah, sorry, I've been a little. I was waiting for him to tell me about the sandbags in 67. <laughs> oh, 68. Oh, my bad, sorry. Yeah, I have a couple things. Go ahead. So, two people are not going to be chosen for the seat. And we still have other boards and commissions that have openings. So, I would encourage you to look into those and participate. And uh, kind of a question here, without compromising your core values, if an issue come up that's very controversial, are you a compromising enough person to figure out the right decision without compromising your core values? I'm definitely not gonna compromise my core values, my ethics and morals and standards is who I am, that's embedded in me. So that I, will never, I won't waver from that at all. I agree with what she said. Um, I've, again, with my job, I base very much the majority part of my life of what I believe and my uh, morals and ethics. Um, and I would rather look somebody in the face and agree to disagree than go against my nature. Um, yeah, I, I, I won't compromise my core values, but I do very much believe in compromise and, you know, understanding different people's perspectives. You know, one of the things I love about Southeast Ohio is that we're kind of this like fault line where, you know, you have people coming from cities and like the metropolitan world and culture, and then you have rural Appalachian, Ohio. And so you can't take, you can't drive five miles without talking to somebody dramatically different about how they think and how they want to solve this problem. And so if we're going to get anything done around here, I mean, we have to be able to listen to each other and understand one another's perspectives. One other thing. Kind of turn the tables. Do you have any questions for council? Right here. <laughs> so I understand it's um, a lot of nuts and bolts. How much um, does a person need to understand about like the way that municipal government functions before they can like step into this role and be helpful or effective? I think the most important thing is, um, you know, for the city of Nelsonville, like I would encourage you to, like, you know, read the charter, mm -hmm. understand like how we're supposed to function. Um, but, you know, our law director, our city attorney is here at every meeting to make sure that we're staying on, you know, on track. Um, I think the other great thing is you can come in and make an impact pretty immediately um, through your committee work as far as like putting forward legislation and all of that. 
um, you know, you do have to do like sunshine law training and a couple of things um, as far as that goes. You have to like file a, a pretty, you know, extensive financial disclosure statement with the state annually. But it's not like, you know, you have to you know, understand constitutional law uh, to sit here, you know, every other Monday night. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of the controversy is gone. So there is not a lot of meddling and there's not a lot of. <clears throat> What's the proper word? Well, I, I think it's very thing, straightforward. Yeah, yeah. and I it, think the thing is that, like, we do going, the right way. going back to what Corey's question there, um, I think it was Corey's question, is you know, we don't always agree, but we agree to come to a consensus on a decision. And when we come to that consensus, we agree to support it moving forward and not, um, you know, be negative towards one another when we leave this room after we vote on something. That's something that I think over the past couple of years that those, you know, I think, you know, we've all worked to, um, you know, say that this is not going to be a body that argues fights and bad talks. It's each professionalism. Other. Yes. We pick on each other a lot, yeah. but, you know, it's all in, in good fun. Um, I, I wouldn't say, I, I would say it's, you know, I, I was at the time when I first initially got on council, it was more, you know, trial by fire, but, you know, it's, a little bit on the job training, um, you know, it, I think the basics that you would want to understand is the difference between a statutory form of government versus a charter form of government. So, you know, statutory where you have a mayor and the mayor has the, the power, you know, over council. So council can vote a certain way and the mayor has the ability to veto that. Uh, in a charter form of government, you know, which I, I'm actually partial for, there are some in the city that would rather go back to mayor form, but in, in, uh, the charter form of government is, you know, the power is with the people, and we're a pretty good cross-reference uh, of the people, other than the five white males on uh, on the on the panel. But you know, we we live in different neighborhoods where we see different things. We all have different professions, so you know, we we have a cross section better than one individual. It's my point. I'm joking, but I'm serious in that aspect. So, and we we have the authority. So we and we direct the city manager. And, uh, and his or her job is to carry out the day-to-day -day operations, um, you, know, you know, for the city and then come to council as needed, um, you know, for appropriations or, you know, ordinances or resolutions. Um, so, you know, he or she can get their job done. And um, so I, I, you know, I think that's a big uh, understanding at first. And then, um, you know, understanding the charter, I think is important. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but I, I think, you know, a lot of it is though kind of on the job. You need to, you know, do some training, go to committee meetings, understand, you know, we're discussing certain things. We bring it to council. Um, I mean, Greg, Greg understands a lot of this even more than I do. He's been on council. He's been on planning commission, um, you know, understanding what the committee's roles are, what understanding what the, the board's roles are um, and, uh, and how they all, you know, work together. Um, but I, I would say those are the initial things. And, and for me personally, <clears throat> we're, we're a small city, we're a small government. I'm not, I don't like politics. I've never got involved in this to be in politics. I did it to be involved to try to make the community better. Um, I got tired of complaining. So I wanted to be part of the solution versus part of the problem. And uh, so in my opinion, instead of bringing you know, big agendas, <laughs> we need to check boxes. We got potholes to fill. Let's get a bill. Check, right? Those are to me. Find the money to do it. <laughs> that you know, yeah. yeah, that's that's the challenge. Then it's like, okay, how do we how do we do that, right? So, but the, to me, those are the the problems, and let's solve them. And uh, not about politics. Not about you know. You I think that's important. It's, it's also about understanding your role, mm -hmm. as he said. You know, we hire and like supervise the city manager if you will but the city manager runs the day-to-day -day with the city you know we're not involved with you know how the city's being run on a day-to-day -day basis at, at a micro level like that and you have to understand what your role is and as Corey said you can't come in with a big agenda um you know we want big ideas but we don't want you know a specific like agenda for a an entity or a person in the community, um, as far as that goes. Sure. 
sometimes you have to you have to put what's better for the you we do, I we always try to do this is we put what's better for the community better than what's better for ourselves yeah. you know and you know we voted on stuff rental registrations a lot of us here are landlords or no landlords or work for landlords and you know you vote on a vote on a uh, rental fee that raises ten dollars overnight which it doesn't seem like a lot but if some of these landlords have several several properties that does come you know it can weigh into five factors so anybody have any more questions one more question after you vote on who you select when um you sworn out when will they know and when uh, no, tonight. No, tonight. tonight and when will the process start you will get sworn at the very next regular meeting, which is next, next, next Monday. Monday. Yeah, next the 28th. 28th. Wow, yeah, I'm moving fast. Huh? Yeah, we, we, we <laughs> pushed the gas. Well, it's 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 a, a, uh, <laughs> you know what? There, there's a. It's kind of like there's a reason. It's a, it's a, it's a, there's yeah. We, we don't. There's like no like cooling off period or whatever after we vote. It's like we will vote. Mm -hmm. The, and then Done. the lot of the, the city attorney does the swearing in that will happen at the next that vacancy's been a roller coaster so yeah. it hasn't been uh oh, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's well informed okay. yeah. you've heard anything about city council or anything with that yeah. <laughs> the fact that you guys are here speaks a lot it right. does you know what when i applied i will say this when i applied for the open position years ago i was the only one i was it and you know and we had five people for two seats when uh, Justin and um, Elizabeth applied at the last minute. Um, two of them dropped out. This changed their minds. Uh, why, I don't know. There were some other things that were going on. And one gentleman couldn't make it, and we video, we interviewed him over the phone. So, I mean, it's very nice to see three for one. That's, that's a huge change. So, all right, with that, uh, I think this will Yeah, just a, maybe right. it's a quick mm -hmm. question. Uh, so I know with the national political discourse, it's really polarized. Does that, like, present itself in this space? No, like, is we're that, not, no. We, we don't no. run as um, a political Republican. party. Yeah, no. we're just, yeah. yeah we're nonpartisan. We're nonpartisan. Nonpartisan, yeah. nonpartisan. Yeah. Yeah. yep. And nor do we. We, nor we do don't we talk about it. And you don't make it an issue this We make it yeah. local. Sure. We do local. No, local. We, have, we, we, we have stick to our local. 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 We got enough, we got enough to talk about. Sounds good. Elevating that. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, okay, with that, a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel. I will move. Second. Um, Mr. Clement, I'll yes. move. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Uh, Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Oh, Ms. Jones? Yes. Okay. Well, Okay, motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Second. 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 Mr. Taylor? Yes. Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Mr. Plant? Yes. <coughs> okay, um, I nominate Chief Timms. Inskeep. It, what is it? Inskeep. 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 I call her Chief. Inskeep. Um, I nominate Inskeep. I nominate Nick Smith. I'll nominate Gina with Taylor. Okay. All right. Um, let's call the roll. Uh, we'll vote on Chief Tim's first. Call the roll. <coughs> okay, hold on. I'm not usually the note keeper. So I don't know the whole thing. So you started with. I know. <laughs> I got it. I got it. You know. I'm not messing with her. I would not. I'm just trying to finish it. Talk for uh, Wait, are you saying I have to start with Greg again? No, so no, well, start yeah. with me. I start with no, me. start with yeah. Yeah. Because she asked me for okay. Yeah. You can start with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Miss Jones. Miss Jones. Okay. Actually, I'm Mr. Let's see here. Uh, Mr. Dumpy. Yes. Mr. Sherman. Yes. Mr. Booth. Yes. Mr. Clement. Yes. Mr. Yes. Taylor? Yes. Uh, Ms. Jones? No, I, I'm concerned that there's a conflict of interest. Okay. But the ayes have it. You only need four. So. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations.
You okay? Yeah. It's Inski. You are? It's Inski. 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 It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, Jalen, Nick, guys, thank you very Ooh. much. I think I speak for all council when we hope that uh, you guys will stay uh, engaged. There's a million different ways that you can be engaged with the city. Just stand right here. Okay, we are open back up to the public, so you guys can always come to council meetings. Right. There, there are commissions and committees and there's all kinds of things. Years. Years. There's a lot of stuff okay. that needs to happen. And we got an upcoming election um, next two years, year. Sir. Two years? Yeah, that'll be. 2024. Yeah. Oh. Please no. run. Oh yeah, please run. <laughs> and um, I won't be running. I like I, I like your idea, Nick, with uh, you know, uh, like a QA on the square or something with council members. So we're gonna do a podcast, you're gonna lead it. Oh great. And uh there we go. Let's get ready for that. Yes. And that's on bottom, the public square. Actually, it does sound great. Actually, yeah. Does. So yes, Nick, you're in charge of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. Hey, so, just don't put oh, corn yeah. on first. <laughs> I, I, already, one, I just put myself. This one right here <laughs> never gets on. All right, I'll, I'll uh, that is not a mirage. Yeah. That is black material. It's not a mirage. He does uh, not get on. It's like your ideas about the website, and things like that. So if you start to reach out with you and maybe travel with some yeah. uh, ways to make it more engaging for people. Yeah, happy to be a part. Sure, I know you've got ideas because you bombard me with them, and I love that. So please, you're easy to get to. <laughs> <laughs> please keep that passion because we need more people like you in town as well. Thank you. Thank you all for applying and really do get involved. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. We've got a lot of things that we need input on. Um, and you'll see us here at, at meetings. You'll see that there's nobody here providing feedback. That's yes. a challenge to, it, to, it, there's yeah. nobody asks questions. Nobody comes to meetings. Yeah. I mean, it's basically yeah. us sitting here with a TV screen. There's plenty of comments on Facebook, though. Well, Always. Yeah. People can okay. I'm going to make a motion I'll, to adjourn. I'll second that motion. Um, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Quint? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Okay. See, she in her first or so. I know, third person. Um, and actually, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I think that, uh, you know,